When you start a company, you're not expected to reinvent the wheel from scratch. Instead, you build on existing knowledge, refine what works, and create something better. That's how real innovation happens, by learning from the past and improving on it. If you conduct thorough research and refine existing ideas, that's not just acceptable. It's smart. But if your entire approach is simply copying and pasting without understanding the deeper complexities, you'll eventually hit a wall. This is especially true in high-stakes industries like space exploration, where cutting corners and blindly replicating existing technology can lead to catastrophic failures. Unlike software or consumer electronics, where mistakes can be patched or updated. In spaceflight, one design flaw can result in a lost mission, millions in damages, or even human lives at risk. The danger multiplies when launch operations are conducted near populated areas where failed boosters or uncontrolled debris can come crashing down on civilian homes, as has repeatedly happened with China's reckless approach to spaceflight. A recent example is the Long March 3B rocket launch on January 23, 2025, which successfully delivered a satellite into orbit but resulted in a booster crashing near a residential area. This was not an isolated incident. China's fast-tracked space development has repeatedly resulted in failures. One of the most concerning aspects of China's space race is its repeated failure to properly control rocket debris. The Long March 3B, a workhorse of China's space program, uses a design that drops its strap-on boosters back to Earth uncontrolled. This is unlike SpaceX, which has perfected reusable rocket boosters that land safely. Instead of developing its own safer approach, China continues using older, riskier methods, leading to significant safety hazards for civilians. China's pattern of reverse engineering and replication is evident across multiple projects. Companies like Deep Blue Aerospace and Landspace have directly copied SpaceX's reusable rocket designs without demonstrating the same level of engineering refinement. In June 2024, Deep Blue Aerospace's Nebula 1, which closely resembles SpaceX's Falcon 9, exploded during a landing attempt. The failure was attributed to landing software errors and insufficient thrust vector control, problems that SpaceX resolved through years of iteration and data collection from previous failed landings. Landspace, another Chinese company trying to enter the reusable rocket market, has faced similar issues. Their JUK-1 rocket failed due to a third-stage anomaly, an issue that would have been prevented with more rigorous testing and system validation. Landspace's JUK-2, which uses methane as fuel like SpaceX's Raptor engine, saw partial success but failed to demonstrate full reusability. China's approach has been to take SpaceX's concepts, methane-powered rockets, vertical booster landings, and even the overall structural design, without going through the same iterative learning process that SpaceX used to refine these technologies. Beyond small private companies, China's state-run space program is also following the same playbook. The Long March 9, a planned super-heavy lift rocket, looks nearly identical to SpaceX's Starship system. Initially, China's plans for Long March 9 involved an expendable design. But once SpaceX demonstrated that Starship could potentially be fully reusable, China abruptly changed its plans in 2023 to adopt a similar approach. The problem with this rapid shift is that China lacks the years of experience SpaceX has accumulated in building reusable spacecraft. Developing and perfecting reusable rocket technology requires extensive flight data, AI-driven guidance improvements, and rigorous real-world testing which China is rushing to do in a short time frame. This rush has already led to serious consequences. In August 2024, a Chinese Long March 6A rocket broke apart in orbit after delivering 18 satellites, creating a cloud of space debris that now threatens other spacecraft. Unlike SpaceX, which has strict deorbiting protocols for spent rocket stages and satellites, China has not invested in effective debris management strategies. SpaceX's Starlink satellites, for example, are designed to deorbit themselves at the end of their lifespan whereas Chinese satellites have contributed significantly to space debris, increasing the risk of collisions in Earth's orbit. 
one of China's biggest weaknesses is its lack of an equivalent to SpaceX's Starship program. Starship's goal is full reusability, with rapid turnaround between flights, drastically reducing launch costs. China has announced similar projects, such as the Tengyun space plane and new reusable rocket concepts, but none have successfully reached the prototype testing phase. SpaceX, on the other hand, has already launched and landed Starship prototypes multiple times, gathering invaluable data with each test. China's attempt to match this progress is hampered by its focus on replication rather than independent technological breakthroughs. The financial burden of this race is another major issue. SpaceX operates on a highly cost-efficient model, where commercial satellite launches, Starlink revenue, and NASA contracts fund its R&D. China's space program, however, is largely government-funded, meaning taxpayers bear the costs of failures. With expensive projects like the Long March 9 and other reusable rocket initiatives still in early development, China faces increasing financial pressure to justify its rapid push into space. China's desire to compete with SpaceX has also led to rushed decisions in crewed spaceflight. The Tianhe module, the core of China's Tiangong space station, is a scaled-down imitation of the International Space Station's design. China has expressed interest in landing astronauts on the moon by 2030, but their reliance on unproven rocket designs raises serious safety concerns. Unlike NASA and SpaceX, which conduct extensive astronaut safety testing before missions, China's approach has often been to fast-track missions without the same level of transparent safety verification. The gap between SpaceX's well-executed innovations and China's rushed efforts is clear. SpaceX took nearly a decade to perfect Falcon 9's reusability, going through multiple failures before achieving consistent landings. China, on the other hand, wants to achieve the same level of success within just a few years, often skipping the necessary trial and error process. This lack of patience and over-reliance on imitation may ultimately hinder China's ability to become a true leader in space exploration. If China wants to make real progress in space exploration, it needs to stop copying and start doing deep research to build its own technology. This is exactly what SpaceX did when it first started. Instead of just following what NASA or other space agencies were doing, SpaceX focused on making space travel cheaper and more efficient. When SpaceX was founded in 2002, it was a small company with limited resources. Its first rocket, Falcon 1, failed three times in a row before finally reaching orbit on the fourth attempt in 2008. These failures were tough, but SpaceX learned from them and improved its designs. This trial-and-error approach helped them build better rockets over time. One of the biggest advantages SpaceX had was that it controlled the entire production process. Instead of relying on outside companies for key parts, they built everything themselves rocket engines, software, and even manufacturing facilities. This allowed them to quickly make improvements without waiting on contractors. SpaceX also introduced reusable rockets, something that had never been done successfully before. In 2015, they landed a Falcon 9 booster for the first time, proving that rockets didn't have to be discarded after every flight. This saved millions of dollars per launch and changed how the space industry operates. Today, Falcon 9 boosters are reused regularly, making launches cheaper and more frequent. Now SpaceX is working on Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built. Unlike Falcon 9, which reuses only the first stage, Starship is designed to be fully reusable. It will be able to carry large payloads, send people to the moon, and even support missions to Mars. SpaceX is testing Starship aggressively, with each test helping to improve the design. Instead of copying SpaceX, China needs to focus on solving engineering challenges on its own. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.